Hello, hello. As you see, it is Tracy and Tara this week. TNT. TNT. TNT too. Yeah, TNT um, too. Because like you are already TNT with Tanya. Boom. Um, That's the OG boom. TNT. <laughs> uh, shout out to Tanya who is uh, saving the world and doing campaign things better than Drew. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Drew is like I'm gonna be a true American politician and have an affair immediately. Um, immediately, he said, <laughs> "What can I do to be trifling?" I know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> whatever. Um, how's your week? How are you doing? I know you just came back from something fun. Yeah, it's my mom's first of two birthdays. Um. And so, like, if you're not, if for everybody who's not Black um, and Black and from the South, like, a lot of Black people put birthdays in the family Bible, and that is how we do it. And so, in our family Bible, my mom's birthday says July 17th. That's what it says. But according to the state of South Carolina, her birthday is July 14th. Okay. Um, and so, now she just has two birthdays, so... <laughs> We love to see it. So I went to a food festival. Um, mm -hmm. Well, it's like a, it's a weekly thing. It's called Smorgasbord LA. And okay. like a bunch of different LA food businesses come and they have like stalls. And um, I just really wanted a lobster roll. And so did my mom. So we went and got lobster rolls and they were delicious. I and love to hear that. you will love this. And I kind of, if you can go, I want you to kind of go. So I was, I'm writing, I told you like, before I'm writing a paper about this sort of like diasporic war mm -hmm. that is happening, but I couldn't find sort of like an end to kind of connect it all together. And then Kendrick Lamar and Drake happened. And I was talking to my advisor and he wants me to be on a panel with him at this comp, the car conference, which is the collegium for African-American research um, in Berlin in March to talk about the Kendrick and Drake <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I'm doing in March I'm gonna be in Ooh. Germany I need to help with the talking points I'm so excited about this yeah um, shout out to anybody who does not know about Kendrick and Drake who listens to this podcast because if you do know you know that I named a lot of episodes <laughs> <laughs> yes um, yes I know. have noticed west coast best coast shout out to Kendrick um not like it's, cr it's crazy because my advisor is like a 72 year old white man so I had to sit and explain who all the rappers were and he was like I love it let's do it <laughs> let's talk about because it. it's a it's like a knowledge is in motion that's the theme um and like this idea of belonging and blackness is mm -hmm. one of the topics and so like that's essentially what I'm going to talk about um everything that's that nice. can be brought up <laughs> Boom. Maybe Kendrick can come right GH. Um, have some blackness and some How belonging. have you been? How have you been? I know you're back on tour. I know. Well, um, I am in Milwaukee visiting family. Um, I had all three of my nephews, well, three of my nephews who are in Milwaukee here at my mom's house. Three under three. It was a lot. But they are very cute. Shout out to this thing called Jewel TV. Um, for any parents, um, it is like trap nursery rhymes. Um, it's amazing. Um, they do their ABCs. They count over a trap beat. Um, it's the cutest thing. But also like really sad because I looked it up and it's like there, there's like all the kids. There's one kid that's like has like angel wings. It's like why does this kid have angel wings? And the family was like, he was like the oldest and he passed away. So he was like, they're guarding an angel and they keep they keep him in. I know, they keep him in all the work. Um, so that's what kept us sane. Um, by like, the two-year-old has a scooter and he rides it like, like as if he should be in some kind of Olympics for riding scooters. I miss being a kid <laughs> and just finding joy and passion in the weirdest most mundane mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like so they were amazing and I just you know they just kids rejuvenate you they remind you why you do everything that you do um and I really love being an auntie because 
it was exhausting and then they went home with their mamas and I loved that <laughs> so yeah anyone having baby fever just go find an actual human baby to be around for a few hours and it'll just snuff that out right immediately Mm-mm. and I want them back and I want them for a few hours and then they're gonna leave again and I love every part of that mm. it's so fun <laughs> <laughs> well, let's get into GH. I we were talking kind of before we pressed record, and I was like, "What do I have positive to say about this show?" For real, T- tying it back to what you just said about your nephews, you want soap babies. You want to have the baby, and then it goes off screen into the off screen extended universe, and it's only here when as a plot point. <laughs> well. It's here for a few hours and then it goes back with the nanny to the off screen extended universe. Stasha cooks for it, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. Just brings brings everything by in like a picnic basket, like Yogi Bear. Like, okay, Sasha. Exactly. <laughs> I was like, not the basket. Like, here, Michael. And she has several baskets around her. Like, this is what she's doing with her day. Just like, delivering food, like like a fairy princess, like just straight out of Disney. And she is beautiful, so you know. gorgeous. Um, but my performer of the week this week, Brooke Kerr. Um, we're gonna okay. get into we're gonna get into the storyline, but let's just talk about like the very the positives. I have always loved Brooke. I've loved Brooke since Passions, um, and I just love that when, when it's no matter what she is given, she does not phone it in. You can feel her passion. You can feel why she's saying what she's saying. Um, and for me, that helps me go along with her. Um, I support Portia's rights and Portia's wrongs because Brooke puts it across so well. Um, so for me, she was the highlight of the week. And, you know, I'm also, give me a recall petition because I'm trying to sign the recall of Laura Collins too. I've been a member of the Friends of Poor Charles for years. <laughs> um yeah Brooke killed it like she's and they have her in the that's the thing and if you go on like say Twitter because not all social media is the same but like if you go on Twitter like they don't give up they don't care what Laura or Curtis or anyone saying they're like I'm team Portia mm-hmm. this is a crazy thing and I mean she has it's not like it's a hard sell for I mean this the writers are making it seem like it's a really hard sell to want to keep Heather in prison but like even if I was leaning towards like like say I didn't know any of Heather's past and I just know the events that have taken place and this bum hit maybe I'll be like well uh," but like Portia got me like no no she's a menace to society um Portia just a mother trying to protect her child um, and she's literally doing it by herself. I feel like there's several like female characters on this show you could bring in to like fight with Portia. Like, where is Sasha? Where Where's is Carly? Sam? Sam. Like, you got Elizabeth talking about Franco was crazy and I still loved him. Like, I believed in the brain tumor, but other people didn't. And so, yeah, like when you have the show, you have Laura Tears. Laura's crying and I felt nothing I was like sorry Jeannie usually this does something for me but I no 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 you sound crazy and that's all Portia Robinson that's all Mm -hmm. Brooke Kerr because like I'm afraid that Portia's gonna find out that I was feeling sorry for Laura and come yell at me and so (laughs) you know and so yeah I all the the, no one came close this week No. Well, you know what? Let, since you already started talking about the storyline, let's talk about the story. Let's start with that story. So as folks know, Heather is in jail. Poor, uh, Laura is like, now, I don't understand why people don't want me to get her out. So Heather is saying she should stay in. But you got like everybody else being like, Laura is so brave for wanting to get Heather out. That is including Curtis. That's including Trina. And that's including Jordan. And that's really frustrating for me. And I think they're, the, like you said, I think I feel like the way they're trying to write it is if Brick or is between is if Portia is wrong. Part of the reason I think a lot of reasons, but one of the bigger reasons I think that that doesn't fly is because we have always known Heather to be this. 
We didn't know yeah. her to be a serial killer, but we definitely knew her to not be right. That's why I said, where is Sam? Because she literally jumped off a roof with Danny. Where's Jason? Like, where are people who she has hurt prior to being a serial killer to feel this way? Jason should specifically feel a way because that's Franco's mama. Like, I, I and so if this was like a character who went from being like kind of normal to like what she did, and then you can see the swing, maybe it would make more sense for us to feel this way. But we've literally, literally seen Heather be this way for decades. Her first attempted murder was in 1979. I just looked that up. <laughs> okay. Like, that was the first the hit then. <laughs> That part. She's tried to, she sold her baby on the black market in 1977. That was Steve. And then she sold another baby in like 1981. That was essentially Franco. And then she sold another two babies in the same year. Jason and Drew. Luckily they got Jason back. But not Drew. No, because they didn't know. Because you know like women on General General Hospital have like clown car babies where like babies just appear out of people's uteruses. You didn't know they were there. Um, it's very weird. And so, yeah, this idea that Heather, like, it's just this, like, you can't have a six decade long show and then tell the audience only 20 years of it count. Right. Like, you can't do that. Like, that, what do you mean? And so this idea, like, if you want to keep Allie Mills on the canvas, then it's your job to find a way to keep her on the canvas. Um, you don't get to just tell us that because she had a bum hip it turns out she's just she's been a good person this entire time like oh she feels so so sorry like how is how are people not assuming that this is an act right because that's what I'd be doing I'd be like she's very good like she acted her way into camp prison that she she kept breaking out of that part you know (laughs) that's how she got to camp prison and so i i don't understand why like it's because they have this grandson like our grandson i just miss our grandson so much and oh i'm just so sad she's like i can't for the life of me remember why i did it it doesn't matter why you did it these people are dead like Mm -hmm. and the why wouldn't even change you being guilty it would change the sentence you have but it wouldn't necessarily make you less guilty. Like, And then even if you're found mentally incompetent, that wouldn't necessarily give you a get out of jail free card. That would move you from like max penitentiary to like a max penitentiary psychiatric facility. Like until you're deemed and then, you know, you still might have legal help. Like it seems like it's such a lazy, lazy way. And I'm my biggest fear is that she is faking it. And that this whole wallapaloo is to get her out of jail so she could snatch that baby. We could start this stupid baby snatch storyline. And then what then? Yeah, I think that for me, what I don't like is I don't like this happening on Portia's back. And they haven't given Portia enough history, enough um, things that she has done to make it so that when you like that that you have almost the, like the soap cachet to like go against Laura to go against like Port Charles royalty against your own family all we've pretty much seen Portia do is be worried about Trina be worried about Curtis and Lion to be quite honest this is what they've given her to do and so now she's in this position that we feel is in the right. Mm-hmm. Of course you should feel this way. Of course you should be mad about this. Of course. But you have her going against not just Laura, but Liz, who's her friend. Trina, who's her daughter, who she wants to protect. Her husband and Jordan. Literally anybody she is talking to is looking at her like, well, I don't know. And they're like, speaking of the merits of letting out this like serial killer who's hurt her family and to your point 
we're having this conversation so like it's like so purposefully like leaving people out because they're there it's not as if we're having this conversation and we're like at some kind of camp we're having it at the quarter main grounds sam was just in the room sasha was just in the room so people who should have like a stake in this story have no stake and that's part of what has been wrong with the show is that they just write whatever and they like okay well i want this to happen and it's like trying to fit like a square peg into a round hole and they're just like we're gonna make it happen it doesn't matter where you could actually round out a story with the right people and with all of the things that like make a good story a good story but they're choosing not to do it and they're trying to force it yeah, they have Laura asking Trina what she thinks. And I'm not saying that Heather wasn't coming after Trina too, but like she never got close enough to Trina for that to be a direct, like, why aren't you asking Jocelyn, who was like right. running around a dock and then Brick Ava. got, Dex had to shoot her. Um, you know, you're not talking to Diane. You def don't want to talk to Sasha, whose husband is dead. Like, it's just this weird, like, well, Trina said it's fine, so let me continue on. Like, what do you mean? Like, you Nobody actually like, loved Brit. Yeah, I would love to see Liesl versus Laura, because I yeah. would actually be team Liesl all the way. Like, yeah, girl, read her for filth. It's just this very, and, like, that story is indicative of, like, pretty much every story on the canvas right now. It's all so for it. Nothing's natural. It's right. like the writer is sort of positioning people, like, this is what we're doing now. No, mm-hmm. earn, it's not earned. There's no setup. There's no payoff. Like, in some things, it's like, okay, we can go with it because it's whatever. Like, Sunny just throwing Ava out. For sure, we'll go with it, but you didn't set that up. Like, Sonny has no reason to just be turning on Ava all of a sudden. Like, he found out about Alexis, and he's he's done. You have that with, like, the Blaze Christina story. Now the the queer community is just, like, this super gatekeepy, witch-hunty, evil group right. of people who just are intolerant people. <laughs> just can't understand people's choices. You have this with um, the, the Sodi story. Max just irrationally mad. Right. Like, for no reason. And nobody wants to see that. No, you I mean, know. truly. Because we know you're going to not be mad. We know you're going to come together. We spent all this time just tell a story of y'all bonding. That part. You have, um, oh, I just, Drew and Willow being forced together, like literal, you're making out now, based solely off of social media vibes like jokes made on social media about how extra Willow was being about Drew being a hero like nothing's earned or set up or you know it's all shock for shock value mm-hmm. cuz like Drillo if you want to move on to Drillo not Drillo. yet not yet I want to talk I, would, I wanted to talk a little bit about like separating Portia from everybody including Black Hospital and I think part of that and I said this on Brit Space Brit um who's been on the show many times um, she does a spaces on, I still call it Twitter every Thursday. Um, yeah. and one of the and one of the things that I specifically said was that I think that the show, because so much they think that the audience doesn't care about any black person besides uh, besides Portia or sorry, besides mm-hmm. Trina. So you have all of the other black characters in really horrible stories. It looked like they were setting up Drew and um Jordan. Now, I mean, that's gross. Drew is being very gross, so nobody wants that. Like, it looked like they were setting, or, you know, like, Curtis, what is Curtis doing besides looking stupid? What is TJ doing? We haven't even seen him in a story about his own baby. They really acted like he was a sperm donor who might, like, fly off the handle. And we've never seen evidence of him doing that, ever. So it's just like the way they position Black Hospital. Like, where's Aunt Stella? Where, I guess, we haven't seen... Have we seen um, Hat Daddy since he was no, with Kevin he, now? He lives in the club now. He lives in the <laughs> off-screen extended universe version of the champagne room now. <laughs> <laughs> the champagne in the off-screen extended universe, that's just gone. <laughs> 
Right. So it's like, we just haven't seen any of Black Hospital. And I think, you know, there's been a lot of controversy around that. And I think that that's right. And I do wonder what happens when the gates comes because I want to be at a place that feels like it's going on the right trajectory. Like the, the foundation of this show is pretty white, though we did have Black people there. And we've had representation before, and this is going backwards. What is, how are you giving people good stories? How are you rooting them into town? I know that it's hard to give them good stories because everybody has a bad story, but <laughs> like, how are you giving them stories that actually like keeps them firmly on canvas and treats them with respect? And I don't know how you think, like, I don't know how they think they can retain Black viewers when they behave this way. Like, I watch because it's a habit, because I've been watching for 20 plus years. But I don't even know, I probably would be taking a break right now if we didn't podcast, because it's been so bad. Yeah, the show has definitely been a chore. More, It's like a way to hang out with people, like, oh, this yeah. is something I do, and I watch it with my friends, and we make jokes. But, like, if I was watching it with myself, I definitely would have already tapped out by now because like the scene where Laura starts crying and Liz has to like Ugh. that was downright offensive I'm like mm-hmm. so now you're saying that Portia's out here because Portia's not crying right Portia's still heated and so she should, like, be. she should be but like so what are you trying to say that like would Portia just out here make a white woman cry I don't want to they it. did that same thing with Anna and yeah. I'm like, Anna is one of the strongest characters on the show and you're telling me that Portia was like mad at her for coming to her house so therefore she had to cry? That didn't even make sense. This like weird idea and I still this like I wasn't team Anna on that either. Like girl. I wasn't either. And I love Anna. Trying, yeah. Like why are you trying to absolve yourself through on Portia's back? Go away. Because um, it was like Anna was not going over there to like Anna was going over there to assuage her own guilt. She wasn't going over there because anybody needed her to, like, be there. And you went over there, and you didn't even know if you were, and it turns out you weren't even, like, the the target. So what were we doing? Like, literally, they had Anna go over there to paint Portia in that light. That was, like, the purpose of that story. They don't let any of the Black characters stay as mad as they should be. Like, Trina has to be all forgiving, and, like, well, Heather was sick. And then, like, Curtis doesn't get to be mad at Sonny for getting shot because he can walk now. So, like, let's not dwell in the past. And then, right. like, Jordan has to tolerate Cyrus because of Laura. Once again, because of Laura. Because Laura says he's healed. Like, even though he did everything to her through three different Jordans. Um, <laughs> just everything to that woman. But, like, he's healed now. He has a radio show that got canceled and he's forgiving Sonny. So, like, that's the weirdest part. And it comes down to this weird intentionality. Like, for me, when I look at characters like Cyrus and Heather versus Sonny, I'm like, well, Sonny's better person. What he doesn't do is crazy. He's not murdering people just irrationally or blowing up. And I know Sonny. I don't know them like that. Yeah, it's a really good point. I know Sonny. I don't know them like that. But like, at least he's standing in it. He's like, I'm a, I'm a coffee importer. Wink, wink. You know, he's not pretending to be a Bible thumper. He's not crying in the club. In club, he do be prison. at the church. He do be at the church. He's at the church, but like, also he gets to Beach see. Also had the Bible of God watching. Yes, literally to Cyrus. To si- yeah. Oh my God, Cyrus. Cyrus deserved that. <laughs> <laughs> he deserves that ass me dude I don't know why everyone's like he was an old man like I left that too but still like Cyrus no he deserves his ass beat by several people in Port Charles to be honest Jordan I comes love having a Sunny fan on the pod <laughs> like yeah Sunny should have held him down and been like calling Jordan like Jordan you want to get down on this? like <laughs> Curtis you want to get down on this he did shoot you there that too but like they don't get to have those they have to be like above it and better than that and yada 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 why couldn't people just be like they let trina be slightly rude to esme and then she had to just understand that esme was a mother and it wasn't until sis was trying to kill her on a boat that she was like oh i guess i can be irrationally mad at her now which is now rational because she's trying to murder me like yeah and i think i think particularly with a character like trina 
and this is, and I, and I say this to say, I think that they are wrong. And I don't, I don't say this as an excuse or just, I don't say this as an excuse or justification, but I say it as like what I see and what I understand. I think that because people like drag Jocelyn so much for like being snotty and for being like spoiled or whatever, they want Trina to like, um, they want Trina to just be in this heroine role. So they don't give her interesting things to do because they don't want to take her off, off of that light. And I don't know why they don't realize that you can give someone a complex character uh, or com complex characterization and have people still like them. And I think that because people have dragged Jocelyn so much, they are nervous to like allow Trina to be this full character because look at what happens to Jordan and how Jordan gets dragged. And it's unfortunate because I mean there is that racial element even from the audience, but they allowed they allowed Emily to be a little bit messy. Emily was yes. like saintly, and they still let her be a little bit messy. I feel Jordan like they allowed have an opinion, right? I feel like they allowed Sydney's Trina to like because like the, the more the, like the nature of soaps is like I like you, I'm mad at you. I like you, I'm mad at you. I root for you, I'm mad at you. And instead, they're just like, okay, this is the character we want people to root for. So therefore, we have to like not let them do anything that will make people not root for them. It is okay. Trina is a solid and rooted character. If you give her, give her a good story, you can have her make a mistake and we still gonna rock with it. But they don't do that. And it's because it feels like, and you can see this across the board, there are not writers who actually understand how to write these characters. They don't understand how to write black characters. They don't understand how to write characters of color, period. They don't understand how to write queer characters. I don't know if it's just like old white men in the in the writing room. Like, I don't know what it is. Like, I know that people talk about Liz, Liz Court a lot or Cordy or whatever a lot. And I'm and I, it, it, clearly she ain't doing what she needs to be doing. But I'm assuming that there's like a lot of other older white men who are also in the room who are also helping to make those decisions it obviously the book stops with a head writer but it couldn't just be, more than just the head writer is really in the show yeah, I mean I the crazy part is like I don't even think Trina taking a position on this would be a mistake like she's I don't allowed to be like the Ashfords are allowed to not be okay with Heather being free like the, once again, as a Corintho stand, they're upset all the time about literally irrational things. Like, what do you mean? Like, he's a criminal. Like, well, y'all are criminals. What are you talking about? But, like, they're allowed to be upset about that. And it's really crazy to me. Like, you had Emily take positions on things. Mm -hmm. You had her go against Jason or go against, like, her family or go against other characters that have their own fan bases. And, like, it's just very upset. Like, it was batshit crazy to me to have her, like, in this scene with Laura being like, yeah, I think if she was mentally ill, then yada, yada I believe in the justice system. Oh, my God. If I have to hear about the justice system one more time while Anna Duvane is dating Valentine instead of arrest him, I, I don't want... Please stop. I mean, not stop. even that. We're hearing about it from Trina who would have been locked up if your mama and Jordan hadn't usurped the system. Yeah, Hat Daddy was, like, gaslit by the FBI to think he was schizophrenic for 40 years, but let's champion the American justice system. It was even, like, they had Trina talk about, like, I, I don't know who to, like, I, I know what I'm for, and I'm gonna research who to vote for in November. Okay, this is just my petty, like, person who does political work. Trina's a young Black girl. We know who to vote for in November. You can say that you ain't know who to vote for in the primary. That's cool. But let me tell you something. We know who to vote for in November every time. It's just, they live, they want to live in this world. I mean, we don't actually know what political party Drew's running under because they use language that can sound conservative and liberal at the same time like when they called like they called his opponent like in a, a reactionary populist and I'm like well that's not a thing <laughs> that's not actually a thing you took two separate things and put them together 
because like reactionaries are the left and populists are the right. So like which which one is it? Like if well, then you no. got anyway. Um, I also don't think that they know what they're talking about. I mean, I guess the 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 incumbent or like the guy that Drew's replacing was talking about labor. I don't know. I don't want to speculate. It all looks stupid. Um, let's move on to Drew his, his uh, campaign and Drew. Well, I was just gonna say that yeah, I think like Black Hospital is in code red at the moment. Yes, I think that we need whatever we're doing we need to abort we need to reset we need to rethink about who the ashfords are and like the purpose that they serve on this show because there's no problem with like serving your purpose and then like being like when the story dictates it shifting over and doing something else right but like the fact that curtis has his like 12th job on this show (laughs) And like the, the champagne room is gone. We barely see the hospital. Hat Daddy's disappeared into the ex- off screen extended universe. That's where he lives now. We've never really been clear on what Stella's job is, to be honest, besides inspirational Negro, to be honest. Like GH, like, and now Felicia's usurping that position, which I think inspirational is inspirational Aztec princess. <laughs> essentially <laughs> and so like what it, Jordan what is her function besides what's her having, her, her, yeah what's her maiden name how do we know more about Geo Brooklyn's non-cousin than we know about Jordan Ashford who's been on the show for a decade did you know his mom was from Italy and he's gonna get ice cream on Venice it's very crazy um yeah black hospitals in spiral and like we used to have a lot of fun with it and it wasn't it was literally code orange last year so it wasn't even like it was so much better but now we're at like dire like i'm at the point where i'm like all of these people should look for better employment yeah it's not gonna make them do embarrassing things like this and so like yep i'm at this point where i'm like put brooke Timeless beauty, Brooke, on the gates. Uh, Tanisha, go do anything else. You gorgeous, gorgeous woman. Donnell, Rescue go them. hang out with, with your kids. Go hang out with your grandkids. Like, go and work out. Get, get Tabiana in a rom com, in mm-hmm. a comedy. I would look because, like, she's already so funny. Um, anytime you see her on social media, like, you could just tell that comedy. She, I think, also was like a comic for a little bit. Get, get her in a comedy um, with Black people. <laughs> and, uh, you know, like, uh, it's just, they they are not treating the Black characters right and they're not treating the Black viewers right. And, I mean, we can stop there because we can also talk about in every other race that's not white. Ooh, uh, hitting everybody. Asians, like, Latin, Latinx people, like, well, I didn't know. I mean, if you did not watch last week and see our um, interview um, with Jacqueline, um, you definitely should, who plays Blaze. But I didn't realize that she wasn't on contract. How is oh. she in a relationship with Christina in a like front burner story and she's not on contract? Yeah, I don't like that. I like my, I like my actors having job security. Because being on recurring is different for her than it is for someone like Wally Curse. Yes, absolutely. Wally Curse still is going to have a job here. Right. You know, like I would argue it's different for her than it is for James Patrick Stewart. Yeah, of like, course. Him, you know, so I need, and Eva LaRue, Eva LaRue is a legend in her own right. Mm-hmm. And so it's really about what she wants to do. But yeah, Jacqueline, she's been on for a second. She paid her dues. Like Blaze is not even on nickname status anymore. Right, right. We know her. We know her. We know her nick her stage name and her real name, Allie. And I think, you know, like for me, I mean that's a Latino family. Root them in the city. Don't have them just come breeze through and tell a story and then be like, okay, see you later. That's why it, how you end up not having diversity in the town that you use people to just tell a story and then you don't use them again. And and it's different than like a Sasha and Cody who aren't being really used because like we got a lot of white people on the show. 
<laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you do need to go above and beyond to keep diversity as needs. Like, where is Lena Wu? Where is, like, that's who should be part of this Pikeman story. What are we doing? What are we doing? So, it, anyway. that's crazy to me. Like, so you're telling me Carly was wiretapped at a five family meeting and they're not immediately up to Lena Wu's ass? Because it's either her or Cyrus. Right. Those are the only two left alive. So, unless you're going to say one of the dead dudes did it, but like you haven't even said that. Like, people should be in her face. Like, remember when they were hinting at her being Brad's mom, even though she's yeah. way too young to be Brad's mom? That's crazy talk. We, um, love, we love you, Lydia. Look, we miss you. We miss you, girl. <laughs> same. Where's Terry? Like, this off screen extended universe running the hospital. They don't even talk about her being with Yuri. No. Even if we don't even see them together, there was this whole big thing. I remember she, her, like, Cassandra being excited because they were going to do something with them. And I think it's when they exchanged keys or whatever. And we literally don't even hear Yuri talking about her. We don't even oh, hear yeah. them being like, he's with Terry. We don't even hear anything of them as a couple, as a pairing. No, he exists to drive the quarter main kids around playing food. <laughs> oh, my God, this show. Uh, Drew, Drilla, the campaign. Um, my favorite of the campaign was um, Tracy uh, having a Drew Q button, but not knowing that he had changed his name to Quartermain. They don't. They just don't think like you want to have this Tracy Q moment, but then like you don't think like well, we didn't set that up correctly. Like just forced stuff like. And Jane, you know, you were expecting it, but then don't have all the Drew quarter main, like, am I supposed to believe that Drew didn't talk to people before he made this big life decision? Like, we did learn that he talked to Sam off screen, which I think is crazy. Like, you didn't think right. we wanted to see the conversation where he randomly tells his baby mama that he's about to change his and her baby name? <laughs> he's like, it's just a placeholder. It's just so silly. Um, I well, love that I, they had it. Okay, I love that they no, had no, it the, the quarter main mansion. And he, like you said, he's talking about unions and stuff like that. But I, And then he immediately goes inside and starts having an affair. Like a true American politician. Like, I love it that Tracy basically was like, Alan will be so proud of you. And he said, what would Alan do right now? Have an affair? Well, yeah. Exactly. Monica would as well. So he got that on it. <laughs> and, you know, we've always said that they were trying to make Milo the new Lila and Edward. We just didn't know that Willow was about to be Edward. <laughs> Willow, this is such a, a fourth storyline. Um, from and like I said, I don't like them using my girl Jane Elliott to force the storyline down my throat because I did really like when they had Tracy read Nina, but then I'm oh, like, why I is Tracy it. reading Nina? Like I was like, you hate Nina, I get why, but like Nina did stuff to like the Corinthi. Why the fuck was she? Well, she did stuff to uh, Ned too. She did, do, but they never got into that, and that I always know. upset me. It's like you can't just like. How am I supposed to remember if you don't emphasize that people have beefs with each other? Like, they utilize the off credits in the universe too much. They do. I mean, it's also, people forget, I know you don't, but people forget that Tracy loves Michael. She like, that's, love Michael. That's, that's her little homie. That's why it was so funny when she was like, I don't care about anybody but Brooklyn and Ned. I'm like, that's not true. You love Michael. <laughs> um, I, Drillo. So, you know, me and Tanya talk every week about how Willow, like, had, like, you know, it was, like, clear she, it felt like Willow had a crush on Drew. What, so it's not out of the, out of the blue that Willow felt a way about Drew. What was out of the blue was that Drew felt that way about Willow. Because Cameron Matheson just has, like, a, like, indiscriminate chemistry. He just throws it around with everybody. The men on this show really do that. It's like, Cam, like, uh, he has it. Um, Dex has it. Uh, Valentine has it. We know an uh, old boy who's locked up. Um, that loves Carly. Pikeman. Brennan, Pike, yeah, Brennan Pikeman. We know he has indiscriminate chemistry. 
So it's hard to tell when they're actually doing something versus people just throwing their camera around. So I I was surprised at Drew. The conversation was weird. Like, you could be a model. Like, what are we talking about here? Um, and Drew has been annoying, but he has not been trifling like this. This is, th- there was not enough buildup for me to understand why these two characters who have so much to lose in their lives would just be kissing out in the open. That's what I mean. Even for me with like Willow, like fine, she has some crush, even though she he like walked her down the aisle like he was her dad. And oh, like, I forgot about they that. Had the big dad energy. Um, like, oh, you're the dad I always wanted who happens to have an eight pack. But like, <sighs> It's not Michael's done nothing but like be here for you. Like there were so many times for her to like start cheating on somebody with an eight pack. Um, and they didn't do it not once. They were like, We're gonna have Milo work it out. And like they were still having like love scenes up until like a month ago. And Michael's just out here, like, I care about her so so much. And Willow's just like, I'm out here trash in my life. And they haven't given her a real reason to <laughs> do that. <laughs> You know, and then like with Drew, same thing. Like I would have accepted it more if they had it be like, this is some plan to get back Nina because she put me in jail. I'm gonna bang her and I'm gonna bang her daughter and I'm gonna make her catch feelings like some OG, like Wendy Rich era right type soap trifling shit. Like, but no, they're like, we're just giving in to our feelings. And then he's talking about like if we were in a different life, then it would be different. If we were in a different life, you could be her father. Like you're old enough. Why are you this way? (laughs) Like it's just so weird. And then they want us to feel like I mean I will never, but like they clearly want people to feel bad for Nina because she's like out here like I'm catching feelings. I'm like Drew is facilitating things and yada yada yada. And I'm like I don't care about any of these people. (laughs) I think it was shocking. I would not, I mean, it's Sophie, right? And I and I think that that is like part of the problem, again, with these writers, sorry to drag them, not sorry, is that they do not give you the buildup or the payoff. So like, we sh- if we had seen some charged moments between Willow and Drew, like if we had seen Willow and Michael fighting, if we had seen maybe Drew kind of giving Willow a look like, mm, okay, like, if we had seen any of that, this would make sense. But it doesn't. Then we have probably what's not going to be good fallout. I, I have always said this about Willow, which is she doesn't have anybody. They have not built her relationships in this show that are independent of Michael. And now Chase Harrison is a quarter main. So who is going to be on Willow's side? Maybe Nina, I know she's supposed to confide in her, but like other than that, like who is going to be on Willow's side? She's about to be ostracized for her whole family. And if they do it right, week. huh? I don't think she's telling her next week. There ain't no way she's telling her she kissed Drew next week. Mm, I don't know. But like if she's being ostracized, she's about to be ostracized from her whole family. Sasha already picked Michael. Out? Yeah, Sasha picked Michael. It would be different, I think, if Michael did Willow wrong, Sasha might pick Willow. But what she saw, she's just like, Michael ran, like, <laughs> after Willow and uh, and uh, Drew, Drew kissed, Michael bought his goofy ass, I'm like, I smell beignets, like, what are we doing? They made him look so doofy. So I just, yeah, I, I don't, I don't think we're gonna have an appropriate level of fallout. It feels like they're just being trifling with Drew all around. I still think there's a possibility that Geo might be his kid. So it's just like, Drew's just like, I'm running. All of my secrets, all of my skeletons are coming out of the closet. Like, you're a sailor, Drew. You should wear <laughs> condoms. Sailor. You go from port to port. That's so trifling. He's about to have Oscar and Geo. That's so trifling. My goodness. <laughs> Marjorie Taylor Greene in Port Charles is about to have a field day with Port. Oh Lincoln. my god. So he is a hoe and a half. <laughs> the only worst candidate would be Sunny. I have 12 baby mama Corinthos. But it, but like this behavior, like this has never been who Drew was. Also, who is Drew? 
True. He has Jason's memories, and this is not how Jason operates. <laughs> right. So if you had Jason's memories, you cannot tell me that you would do Michael wrong. That's your baby. That's the OG baby. You broke all the laws to steal that baby with two other people. <laughs> like Michael is Jason's original kid. And so know. that's the thruple baby. And so yeah, it's a very weird, like it's soapy. It's almost like it's like, and this is Chris and Dan, but it was like when we found out Death was working for Michael, it was oh. that shock moment. You were like, oh my God, you got me. You guys got me because I did not see this coming. And they did nothing with it. I loved that. But this is worse. Oh, yeah. See, this is like when it happened, I was like, what? And I thought it was a dream sequence. I thought because they had But we already thing. had the soapy moment with Drew and Nina. We didn't need this. I mean, but that's supposed to be the soap. Is that like, and I swear to God, it goes into because I think Corte didn't like when they wrote that uh, Nina Bobby confrontation. And like, she like Nina la- laundry listed all the things between Bobby and Carly and Bobby's own life. And so, like, deep in her like gullet, she was like, if I get a chance, I'm going <laughs> to make. That bitch and Willow are sleeping with the same man. So she is. <laughs> because it's just so too yeah. home. I'm like, so you're giving her the OG Bobby and Carly story. Like, without yes. it being as soapy or written as well. About characters, neither of these characters, you know, people that we care yeah. about. Drew is Carly in this situation. Oh my God. I would also say the other thing about Nina that I found to be interesting is this is the thing I hate about her character, which is why I could never stand. Is like, are you a bad bitch or are you not? So you come here and Tracy's kind of like, uh, whatever, why she here? And you run up into another room to cry about it? You j- we just saw you cussing out some other dude and, and like firing him and you standing up to people and you got all the little movement in your neck and all that. And then when Tracy says some mean words to you, you in another room crying. Like I get that the setup was that show that like, oh, her and her and Willow are gonna talk. And like Willow's gonna say, we don't hate you. And then Willow's gonna see fireworks and kiss Drew. <laughs> That's like the setup. But I wasn't feeling it. Yeah, that didn't make any sense to me. Because literally, like what, the week prior, she was like, step into Alexis when Alexis quit the invader. She was like, we have a contract. And, da, 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 da. and Alexis has been saying all kinds of crazy shit to her. And she wasn't crying about that. Like, it's a very weird, it's very contrived. It's like, once again, contrived. That's where we've come to the conclusion. Another story. <laughs> Tired and contrived. <laughs> I just, in my head, when I, when I saw Willow and Drew, I was thinking of the Alicia Keys song, like, all I see is fireworks. <laughs> I need a life. I need to be better. I- I really thought it was a dream. It was like the haze of the scene. I thought I was going to pull back and it was going to be Drewby and like, or Willow or Drewby. I'm like, what? Can't do that. Mm-hmm. Like, this is the beginning of it. And they said, no, bitch, we've been in this for months. <laughs> like, we're in the middle of it. So that's the beginning. <laughs> like, and I'm like, wait, I wasn't oh, prepared. And not in a good way, in a bad way, I wasn't prepared. Because what's happening? Yeah. Well, What's also not really happening is Sodi. I I don't know. I understood them to be cute before. I actually, and I didn't particularly like them. I didn't find them to be that this week. I was just like, oh. Um, so they that's the hell. Yeah. But I will say, one, one of the few people, it's I think two people have benefited from this new writer's change, and that's Alexis and that's Maxi. So being able to see Maxi be Maxi, she was so funny this week with her and Felicia trying to get Cody and Max Mac together. Um, she's just flourishing, and she's I, my fave. So I guess that's a good that's a good sign. Maxi is that I would also, and we talked about this a little earlier. I would also put her in performer of the week next to Brooke. Just because she understands her character so well that, like, she can push through through the most pedantic of storylines. And yes. I love that, like, 
her character is like, I've done a million things worse than this man. Let's all move forward. Like, what the hell, bro? Like, remember <laughs> when I was like having Lucky Stella's ass for pills and faking pregnancies? Like, this is nowhere <laughs> near that. Like, this is <laughs> not that. Yeah, and then, I, you know. Yeah. I like Felicia. I think obviously she knows her character very well. And they're both like really good characters to kind of be like, we've done some shit to you, Max. Both of us. And you're still rocking with us. So you should definitely be... Because Mac was so... If you haven't seen the scene, because you've been like ditching it, it was so funny. Because like the reason that they came together was because because they were having this whole romantic moment under the fireworks and Max like telling them about Argentina oh, yeah. and the outback and Cody's just like I'm your son because it's like this romantic moment and Max immediately like you're con artist I can't trust you <laughs> like, <wait. laughs> what the hell? it's so silly what does he have y'all don't have anything Max's whole storyline is being poor and so what what do you have like that he could take from you? What are you talking about? Like <laughs> you're a con artist. Like, you can't have my stuff. What stuff? <laughs> Maxie said what stuff? She was like, what stuff we got that he gonna take? <laughs> <laughs> you confused us. Our family with like the quarter maids or the Cassidines. That is not us. We are not that. Speaking of the Cassidy's, this I just don't know who lives on Spoon Island now. We never found out who bought Spoon Island. It doesn't matter. It doesn't even okay. exist. Like the haunted star, it blew up somewhere in Greenland. And then we had what was it? Lay haunted star, and for him, the haunted star. <laughs> um, I will also say I have this in my notes. Why do we have the most boring group of young adults I've ever seen in my life? I started watching this show, you know, 21, 22 years ago. I was I was still a teenager when I started watching this show. And I remember it was like we had Dylan and Georgie and Max. Like it was mess happening. Mess. And these 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 young adults are like, yeah. Want a beer? I go get ice cream at this place. Uh, yeah. Where's your mom from? Yeah, like all they do is sit around and talk. There's no action, and I'm fine with a little bit of like getting to know people. But can we get to know people while we doing something interesting? I've been watching this since I was a little child, and that is one of the reasons I am so excited that JJ is coming back because it was definitely my one in because he was very cute. And I would be like, oh, it's Lucky. And what is he doing? At 12 years old, Lucky and Emily ran away to find <laughs> Emily's birth parents, went on a cross country adventure that Luke and Laura had to like trail behind them, like an acne like cartoon. <laughs> it was cra- They, at 12 years old, were doing more than these like 21 year olds they're just sitting there talking about getting ice cream and like where your mom stay at and like what are we doing and in summertime they should have a story this is what it is like people you know you stay you're at home you see your whoever watching the show like and now you're watching you're like wait well this is the young people in 2005 they had lulu and johnny the car go on the run I loved it. It was amazing. And so, yeah, it's very, very weird. And like this, the writers between Chris and Dan and now, they have no idea. Like it's either drugging and sex porn, like revenge porn, Mm -hmm. or it's ice cream and beers on the freaking dock. Which is it? Is there not an in-between between ice cream and revenge porn? But even the dr- the like drugging was crazy because it's like Trina had one drink and nobody was like, huh, what's this? Because yeah, we what's drink. It? So yeah, never have I ever. And even the way they have people react to stuff, like, because you got to be over emotional and sad. You can't just cuss a bitch out. 
for being raggedy because <laughs> I'm like <laughs> girl you want to be and that's the thing you want to have you used to have that like obviously you can't say swear words but you used to have people come at people like obviously I wasn't retaining much as a kid but I went back and watched like OG Brenda and like Karen and stuff they were on the pole they were living above Kelly's and they were slapping and fighting each other fighting over the same men like and it, I think it goes back to what you were saying earlier about how like they don't want to have like anything to upset or have anyone be mad at Joss or or Trina like people are already mad at Joss for no reason but, like they don't want to have any kind of like real reason and I'm like but Jocelyn has fans Jocelyn has fans and like as as much as it sucks to see like what her haters have to say because they're just always so unnecessarily creative with their insults um that's kind of what soaps are and you'll yeah. have people who will be team Jocelyn over Trina and vice versa and like that's the whole point because it's because it, it's a compelling story mm-hmm. it's not about like this isn't reality tv we're not voting for these women to stay on the island like they're on a show tell a story please yeah and if you don't want if you want to maintain their friendship even though that's like unlikely with soap french i love i love trust that's my favorite of both of their like pairings that's my ship i love their friendship bring somebody else in then like bring some- <laughs> where's the sage alcazar where is the sage Algazar to come throw a man? I remember back in the day, Maxi was the yeah. bad block. And she right. was the conflict. And so it's not even like a situation where you can have, like, if you've never gone back and watched OG, like Maxi and Lulu, OG, OG, Maxi, Lulu, they fucking hate each other. Mm-hmm. That was the whole thing. And watching them go from enemies to besties is actually what, they're one of my favorite ships. Yeah. Like, they're a fun friendship because, like, they know so much about each other, not because they're best friends, but because they used to be enemies. Mm hmm. And that's fun. Like, you know, have like an actual scene of people. Like the reason why you have to have Drew and Willow making out is because you don't have enough people in Willow's age range to make out with. Ooh. Actually throw your life away on somebody like in a rat. Because that's the thing with making it Drew, like you need a reason. And so like you don't have enough people on the cast that are not a part of the like mature I've been on this show or I've been in soaps for the last three decades crowd. That's a problem. Mm -hmm. That's a problem. And then they don't really like, I think Eden McCoy is like unique because she's one of those characters who started as a young child and has like matured and grown up on this show. And like Young and the Restless has a lot of characters like that. Like characters started very young and grew up on the show and they're still on the show and so like that way you have a lot of legacy just because and this is it's, I'm not going to blame the show for that because a lot of actors will just decide like once they get a little older like I actually don't like asking that much I don't want to mm-hmm. do it anymore I'm healthy. but like they've been fortunate with that but like GH throws characters away they'll introduce a character and just kill them just kill them like six yeah. months later They'll introduce a character and disappear him, a.k.a. Portia's brother. Why is that man not on the show? That's a great man for Willow to throw his life away for. <laughs> you know, right. better than Drew. Um, why, why, why is Dev dead? He didn't need to be dead. He didn't why in the to... world? They, we, everybody thought T, TJ and Willow were going to have an affair. That would have been more interesting. Yeah, why if William Lipton is gonna go off and be a big star and we're all happy for him, why not recast Cameron? Just mm-hmm. recast Cameron. Why recast Spencer? Get a new Spencer on the canvas so we can have a fully fleshed out young adult scene. And that has get, legacy. That has legacy. Get em, recast Emma. Let Brooklyn live her life and be young and cute. Like get you know get Lila Ray out here age up some other people and have like an actual like people can date amongst themselves and switch partners and do all this and like you have your fave ship like we'll never have another J Sam versus liaison because like they won't allow it yeah 
Well, um, really quickly, I want to say something about Praise. Um, so it looks like they're going to have uh, Blaze do some kind of interview. I am worried that they're going to have it be with Perez Hilton. Um, this is like supposed to be like what brings her back to her fans, what brings her back, whatever. Um, one, I think Perez, Perez Hilton is Perez Hilton too, but I think Perez Hilton is a terrible fucking person. Um, I also remember, um, if anybody's ever watched Glee or knows anything about Glee, the guy who played Artie, his name's Kevin in real life, he talked about how they used to like run from Perez because they were scared that he would like expose them. And so Kevin is gay. And he wasn't out to like the world, his friends knew, but he wasn't out to the world, um, you know, while he was on the show. And so he he has specifically talked about being scared that Perez was going to out him. So to have that be like his story and then to have like Perez Hilton come and tell this story, I'm not interested in that. Um, and then the last who thing I'll say about it, oh, oh, right. I and the last thing I'll say about it is, it's also, this is how you know people are old. Blaze could go on her Instagram live and do this. She could do a TikTok. She could go to a streamer. This is not 1990. You don't need to sit down with Oprah to like do an interview for something. You could put out your own stuff. Yeah. It's just, it's very, they, they need somebody under the age of 40 in that writer's like under the age of 50 <laughs> like truly yeah. like yeah. somebody but like even if because I think for the no, I be, <laughs> because of what I do I'm very conscious of how old I am now like and I'm not that old I'm I'm 36 but like being around 18 year old you feel mm -hmm. uh, like 400 um you need somebody on that writer's room who's mm -hmm. just I'm saying right you need a Gen Z person in that writer's room that's just going to explain certain lingo to you that will explain the internet era to you mm -hmm. and how people can operate and do certain stuff because like they're operating as if this is 2006. Right. Like they're very much stilted on stuff and it's becoming a problem to where like you're Several stories are suffering. It's why they believe that you can wipe Jocelyn's uh, sex tape off the internet. What are you talking about? But Spinelli can't hack the FBI. I mean, China begs to differ. Like, what are you talking <laughs> about? Like, the FBI ain't got... <laughs> if you told me he couldn't hack Apple, I'd believe it. But, like, the FBI? Like... He could do okay. that. And so, yeah, it's just a problem. It's a problem. We need younger people. Study versus Ava. <laughs> <laughs> They're both trying to get custody of Avery. Uh, sole custody for whatever reason. We now know that Ava has basically gone to... So, so Sonny has been low on his meds. He's been a fourth. So basically, essentially off of his meds. That, that dosage is doing nothing. Um, but because of Valentine, Ava knows it, so she went to the same pharmacist to be like, take them off at all. So I'm assuming that that means everything's gonna be Ava's fault now. Also, very ridiculous because your baby still lives with him. <laughs> so, like, what are we doing? Sunny and Ava calling each other bad parents is like the personification of that Spider Man pointing at himself meme. It's like crazy because like Sonny's a criminal, hundred percent, and Ava is the person who will allow her baby to be around her unmedicated bipolar father just to have a gotcha in court because judges love that. Um, like it's just the writing is abysmal. It's another one of those stories that has not been earned. Um, even the like how Ava got the tape of homophobic Maria Santos saying all the homophobic things was so contrived like she just happens to be recording herself for re for no reason for no reason we didn't even know why she was doing that um to just hear her own voice and what she sounds like when she's introducing artists I guess silly um and she just happened to record her 
and they, they just happened to like Sonny's medication like when he was slightly off his medication he was down with Ava and he wanted to make out with her now that he's like even further gone he's like I'm over Ava she's underneath Alexis outranks Ava in the baby mama hierarchy so you have to get out like what do you mean and then like what happened to Christina being scared of Sonny like that resolved itself super quickly so like Christina's over it he brought her a Mickey Mouse stuffed yeah. animal and now she's healed she's having dinner like homophobic Maria Santos is more upset that her daughter is gay than the fact that her daughter is dating the daughter of a mobster you're yeah. fine with that never talk to Sonny about what he's done what he does once even though she's from the island he owns he's colonizing it's totally fine with it but it's like the homosexuality and her being a surrogate that she has a problem with and then once all that comes out nobody's mad at what she said right they're like she doesn't right feel how she wants to feel they're mad at Ava for releasing the tape but they haven't even said it was like oh like I think Brooklyn was like it outed Blaze but like everybody's just like I'm mad at Ava for releasing it because she shouldn't have done it privacy is what matters like what when I think of Sunny and Ava I think of shout out to Meg the Stallion her new album I was listening to it before we got on together um she had the song called BAS, both ain't shit. Um, and she said, I'm lying to him, he lying to me. I guess we both ain't shit. And I feel like that is <laughs> the epitome of Sunny and Ava. I don't know why they have decided um, to do this to Ava. Um, but I know I was talking to you about this. Like, it's one thing, because I think that so often, especially when writing gets bad, we're like, oh, the writers did this to a character. And so we, because we like a character or we like the character in the past, we like, well, you know, the writers did it. Well, I'm now at the place where I'm like, the character did it. Because every character is doing what the writers told them to do, right? And so I find what I find Ava's behavior to be abysmal. And it sucks, because I like Ava. But I didn't like her for a long time. I love Maura West, don't get it twisted. I think Maura West is like one of the best actresses, not just in daytime, one of the best actresses, period. I'm gonna watch Maura West be evil. I'm gonna watch her be a mother. I'm gonna watch her be a mentor. I'm gonna watch her be a friend. I'm gonna watch Maura West, whatever Maura West does. Um, but, you know, she's put it, this storyline's put me in a position where um, I don't like Ava anymore, and that sucks. Yeah. And it's okay because I didn't always like Ava, it took her redemption arc. It was like the point when she was in the bridge, on the bridge with Laura, when she found out that she had been sleeping with Ryan and not Kevin. I said, okay, fine. I like her now. <laughs> just want them to give me a reason, not for why she's doing this. I understand her reason for doing this, even though it's dumb. It's like, it'd be smarter to tell the pharmacist to put him back on his medication so he can be rational again and you wouldn't have to do well, it. Ask who had him off? Yeah, she's like, I don't care who did it. I don't care who knows. You're taking him off. And I'm like, all right. But like, I want to know why she wanted to break up Sona to begin with. Like, at the time, I didn't care as long as they weren't together. But now I'm like, you never really gave her a reason for that. No. And now you have her acting like an immature, spoiled, like, jealous child over homophobic Maria Santos. Are they even dating? Can Sonny date anybody? Like, now that he's off his medication? Like, he seems to just be on some weird, you know, monotone. And then he still seems like he wants to, like, kick it and be besties with Carly and slightly date her. And so... <laughs> I don't know what's <laughs> happening. Ava's just out here. That was my favorite when he went over to the house and Jason was there. Jason just stood there with his coffee cup. By the way, the moss is thriving. Mm -hmm. He was like, we're talking about personal things. Just like, okay. Get out of here. Get. Go on now. Get. I love Sonny's hate for Jason. It's super funny. Um, and, and Jason just didn't leave. He's whatever. He's yeah, drinking his coffee. Like, yeah, I'm staying. I'm I'm very welcome here, <laughs> just like you, sir. Um, <laughs> I also just yeah. appreciate uh, Sunny going around collecting baby babas. Like, mm -hmm. you go speak up for me. You go speak up for me. 
like we got Olivia, Alexis, Carly, like we got all the baby mamas to speak against her. I mean, I just think it's like weird that they've just done this 180 on Ava and now she's just out here, you know, you just, they just, they're the ones who decided to make her and Nina friends and then they had her betray Nina, which I don't care about, but it's weird. Um, Because like, they didn't do a dramatic personality change with Ava, right? They just sort of had her kind of like learn how to think before she acts. And we saw her do that several times since the like Ryan Kevin debacle. Like she still had all the animosity and smoke for like Carly and Carson in general. But like, you know, she wasn't out here. She was like, I'm cool hating them and letting them go in peace while I And co parenting and co parenting with them. Yeah, and co parenting and stuff, even though I will laugh at Carly when, you know someone comes and trashes Sunny's fake funeral. That's just hilarious to me. But, like, she wasn't out here just doing stuff. Because that's my thing, is that Ava's been doing this for months. Like, it started for me, and you don't notice it as much because she's doing things you like. So she's destroying Sona. She's, you know, she's just being super messy, and you're like, that's hilarious. But then she's, like, throwing Carly out of the pimp palace. Like, she's Lady of the pimp palace. She's, like, talking shit about you know Jason all over the shop like Jason is trying to get you like woo that's weird I'm like why girl what do you get from that like then she's like coming for his kids kind of even Jocelyn got some smoke like well you don't know what happened and Jocelyn's like girl do you know what happened you weren't even there what are you talking about I saw Dex and he was fucked up so it, they've never explained that behavior and what she got out of it because like it would have been better if she was sleeping with Sunny right if she was sleeping with Sunny then I'd be like oh okay well she's trying to keep fucking Sunny right and she could tell he's slipping away but like what their weird situationship that's what she mad about that she out of the situationship where she just got to be lady of the manor and he didn't like date her or even like her that much like that one weird did, kiss that one weird kiss what did y'all tell Mo? When did y'all tell Mo he, that Sunny don't fuck with her? Because I feel like that was right before. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I I think that like that's the other thing that's happening in this story, and then also in the Pikeman story, where we don't have any ma- motivation for Valentine. We literally have no point of view for why Valentine is doing what he's doing. We only have Anna's point of view. So then it makes Anna look kind of silly because she's like, I know he's this, and so she just kind of sees like love sick. And that's not Anna's vibe. At least when she does it, she kind of knows. Like, this is really silly. And so if we had another side where we were able to see Valentine be like, struggling with his feelings for Anna, you know, like not setting her up like we think he might, like anything would be better, but we have no motivation for Valentine. And now we got Anna being like, I'm going to go get the phone. And Jason's like, are you? Why are you about to do that? I am not Team Anna in this storyline. <laughs> this is giving me OG Peter August vibes where Ooh. Jason and we'll back to study are correct and Anna won't let anybody do anything because she thinks she knows everything. Except it's worse because now it's her going to get dicked down. And I'm like, girl. I support it. <laughs> but I'm also really trifling. So... <laughs> I'm but, like, girl, but, you at this point, at this point, ja- uh, Jagger's right. You kind of work for Pikeman. Sorry. Eek. Eek. What what you want me to say? Like, you doing more to help Pikeman move weapons than anybody at this point. The banner really is good together. <laughs> I would have been snitched on her. Like, Jason better than me. Jason's digging deep into his J and R like yeah, Jason just, just, just mentioned on Robin's mama. I will, you know, I think it's tough because Vanna, you know, just does it for me. They're like my faves. Um, but yeah, it's a silly story. I, there's I nothing. Think- there's nothing else. There's you know, there, it's a silly story. I don't get it. The- 
only thing that slightly saves it is the fact that like she only knows about Pikeman. If she knew about the other stuff, he would, like if she knew that he was right. messing with Sunny's meds and she was acting like this, I'd one hundred percent throw her away. I'd be yeah, like, no. you just like all the other dickmatized soap hoes. Congratulations, welcome to the club. <laughs> yeah, I am interested to know what happens when she finds that out. Um, yeah, I'm interested to know what happens when she finds that out. I think the other thing that's kind of is funny is like her conversations with Jason about it, and like Jason's reaction, just being like, "You about to, you about to do what? What's going to happen, Anna?" <laughs> Jason does not does not have it. I will say that Jason's return story has been very disappointing. It oh, makes yeah. me really nervous for what they're going to do for JJ. I do hope that that's better because here we are and we find out that they're sending Jake off screen. So I I thought that... When the Barcelona. Yeah. I, I thought that it would have been important for Jake to have some sort of relation, like some sort of confrontation with Lucky. Like I... I'm, I don't know how they're going to rewrite this, but for those of us who have been watching this show for a long time, we know that all the Lucky, all of Liz's kids were Lucky's kids at one point. And they didn't really change that until they had him bring Jake back from Cassidy Island. And he didn't ask about Cameron. He just went and saw Aiden. We didn't, I just... I would like for them to be better than this. I would like for them to figure out a better return story um, so that that return is not stupid. I think if he comes back in August, they can maybe make swing it because these writers seem to be old as hell and they definitely don't understand how college works. Because, like, why is Jake learning in July that he got into a school? Like, he should have been on this. So you have time to actually make plans. That's why Liz scrambling to find money. How old is Jake? He ain't even 18. That's not even real college, is it? No, he's he's supposed to be 17. He's 17 and he's going to art school in Barcelona for his first year of college. So he's getting an art, like a a, a BFA, I think it's called, Bachelor of Fine Arts. Mm -hmm. And so he's going to go do that, which I get. But I think if they bring JJ back, like, the end of August, you can still kind of swing it. You can go off of UC time scheduling and start in mid September. But I think that yeah, you need to have all of like the the LNL two kids that Lucky has supposedly claimed. You know, confront him. You can't have Jake be going this hot for Lucky for Jason and not for Lucky. Like, where's Lucky been? Um, but. I will say the Jason return is the reason why they had to do all this weird stuff. Like, and I don't understand why you couldn't just say that Jason returned to a dramatically different Port Charles. One where Carson's not together, Sonny's with, you know, Nina or Ava, who gives a shit, which, um, where Anna's police commissioner again, and they do things differently. It seems like they've had to either dumb down or straight villainize certain characters to make his return make sense and to usher people into their pre-COVID position before <laughs> Jason left. Um, that's a mistake. Like, you shouldn't have to. And they did this last time with Anna DuVain. They made it so, like, now all of a sudden she has no bearings. She's just sort of caught up in the emotion of it all because it's like her long lost son or it's her her boyfriend who she still loves even though she shot his daughter yeah. and like here's rational Jason in the corner ready to like put someone between put one between someone's eyes for her. it's just really silly like they don't want Sonny with Ava so now Ava has to be evil for like so Jason and Carly have justification to read Ava in the middle of the Metro Court we also had to get Carly the Metro Court back like yeah i'd also say particularly around like the jake um stuff it's so weird to have so much of sam's story be her going hard to keep danny away from jason while we have liz like, encouraging jason to be like in relationship with jake i 
they like in the same way they never had those two like mourn together and be mothers together to their sons when like we didn't see it on screen when Jason died. We don't really see them coming together now. And it would make sense if they did. I mean, my assumption is that something must be going to happen to Danny. I mean, I don't know, but I'm assuming like some things that happen with Danny or to Danny um, and it'll make Sam feel like justified or something, but it's just such a swing and it actually messes, messes up Sam's character to be behaving this way, um, even though she's not wrong. Like, but they're writing her as if she's wrong and they're not giving her the justification. As a Sam fan, I'm like, yeah, of course you want to keep your kids safe. But it's hard to say that on the flip side when we know that he like went to an off-screen baseball game with Jake. Yeah. It's the same way they, they did the thing with Jocelyn where she like broke up with Dex because he was too mobbed up and now she's like, just St. Jason and also nothing matters and everything's fine. Like, the weird except for now is Josh are Jocelyn and Dex back together? I assume so. They don't get any scenes. That's why I was like, people wanted Dex out the mob. Well, he had more screen time when he was mobbed up Dex. Let's talk about it. Yeah. But you know, he just here like catching Joss off ladders and bringing crew to tape ladders now, wearing a police uniform that's three sizes too small. Um, I loved seeing like I saw a little bit of conversation about him catching her off the ladder and people were like talking about which couple it was and, and you know me I'm so I was like that's old school JCM oh, <laughs> and then it was like all of these other couples so I did like a super cut across soaps of people being caught I was like oh guess it's not just JCM yeah, <laughs> like even me I was like damn I guess not People fall. It's a meet cute. It's a traditional Hollywood meet cute of like, oh, I fell and you saved me, and now we're biting. Um, but yeah, Jason's return. But you know what? I'll say that Jason's return. And I mean, it's different because I think like if you're an Elizabeth stand, you would argue that JJ's return last time ruined Elizabeth's character. Um, but I'm not worried in the same respects when it comes to JJ. Um. No just because I don't think you have to do as much mental gymnastics and machinations to fit him back in where like you have certain characters that would automatically have to be in relation with Jason have completely different opinions about you know issues or people that like are dramatically different from when he was last in town and instead of just telling that story where Sunny has to explain, like, yeah, I was beefing with Ava last time you were here, even though she saved you, and now I'm not. Um, even though she did what she did to Morgan, or like, yeah, I'm with Nina, even with what happened with Carly, or yeah, you know, have Jocelyn be like, oh, you're going back to work with Sunny? I have a problem with that, and I have a problem with my mom being around it. I don't like it. No, mm -hmm. we have to make it where everybody just makes room for J Anna being like, well, it's so different for Jason, because he... He was just so young when Sonny or caught him. He was in medical school. He was about to become a doctor. He wasn't that young, actually. And Sonny mm. tried to kick him out of the mob a million times. And you just got out of Sonny's safe house. So what are you talking about? Laura, you're capping for your evil brother and Heather Weber. What are we talking about? Like, so instead of just dealing with the lay of the land right now, they're like, well, we're going to have, like, we're going to shift everything back in the dumbest way possible. Including trashing Drew, because Drew doing all these dumb things is completely correlates to Jason's return. Like Drew Oh yeah, like, Drew's been trashed. It's over for Drew. Yeah. He's ridiculous. Like I don't yeah. even know how you say that. Because I really was like wanting Drew and Jordan because I thought they looked great together. And I'm like, keep that man away from Jordan. Exactly. Because um, you have to trash his character because if you don't trash his character, then he looks like a better son than Jason. Mm, damn. Well, I don't think we're going to have that situation with JJ's return. I think, obviously, like, it's going to be a lot of stuff with Laura. I do wonder if they're going to do something with, like, his return with, like, the WSB and have it be connected to that. Um, I think that will be interesting. But they do have to tell a story of when... I, I, I just hope the story of why he was gone is just, like, I was gone. And we don't have to, like, uncover it. Like, what we... Un like I want his story to be acclimating back, not people trying to figure out why he was gone, if that makes sense. Maybe he wasn't in Africa City, Africa. Maybe he was in South America City, South America with Mac and Frisco. Right. 
<laughs> yeah. He was like in old town, old Spain, old Spanish town, Argentina. I was like, not Spain. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. I'd be okay with it. Um, I think that's all I have for this week. There's more that happened. I don't remember. No. We've trashed it enough. We've done enough. <laughs> <laughs> I've given all of my high things. Is there anything that you have? Is there anything no, you have not a, we go to previews? Not a single positive thing happened this week. Not one. <laughs> Maxie looked great. That was positive. Maxie look, but I mean, I can't even count that because they always look great. Like sure. Portia and Trina, Portia and uh, not Trina, they never put Portia and Trina in scenes together anymore. <laughs> um, Portia and Jordan looked amazing, but everything that was Why said, are we not seeing Portia? <laughs> they're not allowed to be in scenes together anymore. It's kind of crazy. She said, she said, I set up food for you, and dad. Anyway, they were at the same. Fourth of July party and they never crossed paths. Portia came yeah. and went without actually saying anything to her daughter. She just cussed out a white woman, made her cry, and then grabbed her husband and left. Sounds like my mama, to be honest. But no, my mama right. would have came to see me. She would have. I mean, you know, Portia came to see her house. Anyway, I can't even deal with this. We've already trashed it enough. Monday, <laughs> Willow confides in Nina. Drew is in the hot seat. Jason makes Jake an offer. Brennan receives a mystery visit. We already know that's partly. <laughs> um, Anna hits pay dirt. What a weird spoiler. Hit pay um, dirt on fucking dicks. I'm very happy that Anna's getting her groove back. Vanilla looks amazing. She looks great. When is for I mean, just She's in Amsterdam on the like Tony Geary tour that she Which I love. Cast is taking <laughs> apparently. <laughs> um, Geary's okay. Tuesday. Sunny pays a visit to Nina. Ava tries to sway Jagger. Lois presents Gio with an opportunity. Anna must make a tough decision. Willow is taken aback. She got to make a tough decision to hop off Valentine's dick. I'm sorry. I love Anna. I really do. <laughs> it hurts me the most. Uh, Wednesday. Natalia voices her remorse. Nina shares her insight with Maxie. Gio opens up to Jocelyn. More ice cream uh, recommendations. Jason and Jagger have words. Anna is tempted. Thursday, Carly and Jason make a trip to the footbridge. Cody opens up to Tracy. Chase and Dex bond. I miss Michael and Chase. But I guess since I can't have Max, gotta have checks. Um, Nina issues an apology. Natalia and Sunny pitch an idea to Brooklyn. Friday, Trina wrestles with her grief. Sasha encourages Cody. Laura and Dante have an emotional encounter. Do not wake Lulu up. I do not want to hear about it. Um, Tracy is charmed by Gio. Carly and Jason debate their next move. What if it was Julie Marie Berman's Lulu? I'd be very torn if it was JMB. No offense to M. Raylan, I just don't want you to be on this show. All offense, to be honest, <laughs> for me. Um, I mean, it's better, but I just don't like Lulu. I've never liked her. We've always been beefing. The only time I've ever liked Lulu is with Johnny Zakaria. I mean, get Brandon off of Dave. This seems like it sucks over there. Unless you Wally Kirk, I guess, then it's fine, but he did nominate for Emmys, but oh, you know Greg Vaughn is like I, I don't know if he's leaving, but he's doing a lot of GH stuff. You can bring Greg Vaughn on as a new character too. Bring Greg Vaughn back as anybody you want. Bring him back as like unnecessarily younger Stephen Lars, Bucky. <laughs> you can't have him be Liz's brother. That'd be 
so funny though. And you have Olivia side eye. I'm like, did I make the wrong decision? Should I go with this ex con? <laughs> Ned lives in Salem. And so I'm just saying, Greg Ron, Tony Geary lives in Amsterdam. He can't hurt you. He can't hurt you. We'll protect you. I'll fly to Amsterdam myself and tell him no. If you made it to the end, thank you. Tara, thank you for being here. You filled in, pinched at the last minute. Really appreciate you. No problem. Um, if you love the show, we're sorry for trashing it. Please tell us what you love in the comments so that I can love I, it too, maybe. I love um, it way more than you ever will. That's what I'll say to you, listener. That's why I'm still watching it and trashing it. True. Uh, make sure you like, subscribe, share. Um, and if you didn't watch the Jacqueline interview, go ahead and do that. Uh, she's fabulous and we loved her. Um, and okay. you will love her too when you listen to the interview. See you next week. Bye. Once I can figure out how to let things go. <laughs>